Good morning, good morning. It is service time. It is service time. This morning, our call to worship will be coming from Psalms 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Trinity will come now with our praise songs, and we thank you for being here this morning. We thank you for tuning in on the radio, and we thank you for watching on YouTube. God bless you.
Sunday, able to give praise and give thanks to the Lord, our Savior. And we just want to be in the right frame of mind. And we are not going the way that those folks that are unaware out in the world. Amen? We want to live godly lives. We want to make sure that we live a godly example to those that don't know. So when you leave from this place, make sure you take Christ with you and you make sure you show God's love everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. This morning, our responsive reading comes from 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. New King James Version. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. All together, for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's word for God's people.
the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Are there any children here today? If you will come down as children's altar prayer, let us come down from the age of under 18 and under, come down for the altar prayer. Say amen. Say amen again. Praise the Lord. Come on down. That's right. We're going to wait for you. Amen. Amen. She was speaking in tongues and the God knew what she said. <laughs> Amen. I'll give you age and your name. Hi, my name is Ariah Schneider and I'm 13 years old. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to once again wake up for a beautiful day. We thank you for allowing the sun to shine in well, where we are currently. We thank you for blessing the other lands with rain for their crops or to make their lands bloom. We thank you for allowing everyone to be able to get here and that they were safe. And for the people listening on the radio or watching on YouTube, we thank you for tuning in. And we hope that the Lord's message reaches you. And I just pray that we all, that our health, I pray that everyone's health will be in tip top shape. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, my name is Cruz Wilson, and I'm 13 years old. Lord, I just want to say, as we start this new chapter in our lives, as many kids go back to school at LAUSD, throughout the whole nation and throughout the whole world, I just want to say we need to give our blessing to all the teachers because they help us and provide for us so much, and we just need to appreciate them and glorify their names. Also, let's help our students make the best decisions possible as this new year, this new school year starts. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us to keep us safe and us healthy. We glorify your name. Amen. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let us all stand. We'll ask you to stand. We're going to ask those who want to come to the altar of prayer to please come down at this time. Amen. If you have a pressing prayer, we're going to ask you to come down. Um, uh, I, I, I. Lord, you promise that if we keep our mind on you, you will never turn away from us. But Lord, help us not to turn away from you. Help us not to get lost in the things that pull up on us in the world or the circumstances of life. Father, we come in the name that is above a name, Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We pray for those who are sick and shut in among us and are bereaved among us, that you will be a comfort to them. We lift up Brother Smart's sister and we pray for her well-being and safety. She's facing some challenges and Father, you know all about it. And we ask Lord that you would usher in through your power, through the Holy Spirit and touch her body from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, to every organ and gland in her body, that you will make the crooked places straight and the rough place is smooth, that you will fix it for her. Then, Lord, we lift up those who 
become weak and weary in well-doing. We ask, Father, that you would lift up their countenance and lift up their confidence and lift up their faithfulness that they would stand strong in the Lord and in the power of the night. We pray for those who've lost their way. We pray for those who have got caught up in life circumstances, and we pray that you would help them to see the light of Christ, that they would find their way. We invite your Holy Spirit into this service, and we pray, Holy Spirit, that what you would move through the individuals here and those who are listening on the radio, that you would touch their lives, and that you would touch their families' lives. We pray for those who are on the internet that are listening, that you would touch their lives and that you would touch their families' lives. May they witness through songs and hymns and spiritual songs the goodness and mercy of our Lord. May they experience the divine presence of God in their circumstances, where they are, wherever that may be. We lift up our paths that you will continue to be with him, that you'll continue to be with his family as they move about during this vacation season. We pray for all of our church members that are on vacation and traveling, that you give them traveling grace. We pray for those who are in the hospital and those who are facing challenges, that you would meet that challenge, that you would be a bomb in Gilead. We thank and praise and magnify your name through Christ our Savior and Lord. We ask it all and for his sake. Let us all say amen. amen. So now we're going to have a selection from our choir and right after that we're going to hear a word from God through our very own Reverend Adelufu Martin. That man has inspired me. He teaches me. And I'm praying that he inspires and teaches each and every one of you because the word of God is going to go forth today. Amen? Amen. 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 After Trinity Choir, Reverend Martin. Amen.
my strength. You are my life. You are my everything. For you are the great I am. Give an honor to God who is the author and finisher of my faith. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say thank you. We praise you, Lord, for what you've done in the lives of our Trinity family, those who fought against the wiles of the devil during the shutdown and has made it back home to worship with us. We lift up those who are still struggling to come back, that God will pour out his richest blessings upon each and every one. We thank our pastor for this privilege and opportunity to stand beside this secret desk and share the living word of God. We thank you for our music ministry. We thank you for rolling in the choir and all of the wonderful things that God is doing through the music ministry. We need to continue to keep that ministry in prayer. I would love to see our children to come back and singing as well and our youth as well. So let us keep that all in prayer that God would move in a special way. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we praise you. And we thank you for this privilege and opportunity. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would move in front of me. That would you move around me. And that you would move within me. That I will say only that which you would have me to say. And do that only you would have me to do. That you may be glorified. And we give you praise, honor, and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. amen. We're going to read our scriptures found in your bulletin. Let us all stand. And after that, we will have a couple of praise songs because my message is about worship this morning. My message is about worship. Our first song is Holy, Holy, Holy. Our second song is Come, Let Us Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. But the hour is come and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, 23 and 24. And then Ephesians 5, 19 and 20, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 16, it is the NIV, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, abundantly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your heart, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. You may be seated. You can put them on the screen now, please. Holy, 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 holy. If you have your hymnals, turn to page one. Holy, holy, sing with me. All of us sing. Holy, let us all stand. Lord God Almighty. Yes, early in the morning, our songs shall rise to thee. Let us sing it together with all our hearts. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. 
D, let us sing that verse one more time. Holy, holy, oh, sing from your heart like you really mean it. Sing it to the Lord, you won't even know how you feel this morning. Merciful he is, mighty he is, God in three persons. Our next song is Come Let Us Worship the Lord. The song is on the screen. In the beauty of holiness. Do you mean it? Sing it out loud. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the honor. Oh yes, give him the praise. Give him the praise. Oh yes, oh yes, he's worthy. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Why don't you? Him. Why don't you worship him? Why don't you give God all the honor? Give God all the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. One more time. Sing it like you mean it. Sing it to him, not to me, not to the person next to you. Sing to the Lord. Let him know your heartfelt sentiment. Give him the praise. How many of you, when you were five years old, you knew what worship was? Raise your hand. When you were five, you knew what worship is and you understood it. In fact, some of you don't know what worship is today. I'm going to be honest with you. I received my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when I was three years old. I know you think that's impossible. It's impossible with man, but it's not impossible with who? God does what he wants. He doesn't wait for us to determine when he's going to move. Can I get a witness? And I want to share with you about worship. Now, if you look at your bulletin, what does it say? Come on now. What does your bulletin say? Entering God's presence is supposed to be in worship. Entering God's presence in worship. And that should be a personal, prominent anthem for you. 
When you discover who you are, the Bible tells us that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and you are not your own. God made you, God formed you, God fashioned you, God sent you on a course, but we can get lost because I got lost for many years. It wasn't until I got to my 20s that I let God catch up with me. At least I thought I let him catch up with me. He was always right there because he's omnipresent. He's always there. When you go and make a mistake, he's there. When you go do it right, he's there. When you go do it and you're all mixed up, he's still there. When you don't do nothing, he's there as well. When you think you're doing nothing, you're doing something. And I want to share with you today about God's power, presence, and personal worship. That's another title for this message. When you look at this word that it says... But the hour cometh, and now is. That word is omnipresent, is, not going to be. It now is. It's not has been. It is. God is a is God, a now God, a present tense God, not a going to be God. He is right now. Do you know you came this morning because you wanted to hear from God, not me? See, I wanted to talk about the Holy Spirit. I was going to teach on the Holy Spirit and the Lord said, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do something else. This is what you're going to do. And he had me go to the scriptures. And when I got to those scriptures, they begin to open up. And one of the things that you have to learn is that you can study all you want. You can go to seminary school all you want. You can get all the degrees all you want. You can do all that. I've done some of that. And let me tell you something. It means nothing if you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's just a bunch of redundancy and information. And I shared this morning with our class, what's the difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom? If you know what that is, just raise your hand. I'm not going to call on you. I just want to see how many people know what that means. You know what knowledge is? information, data. You know what understanding is? It is the ability to organize that knowledge and put it in its proper context. Do you know what wisdom is? It is the ability to take that understanding and to apply it in its proper context and at the right time. And who was the wisest man that ever lived? Somebody. Speak up. Don't be shy. Solomon. And all his wisdom, what happened to him? He stumbled and fell. See, you can have wisdom, but if you don't have understanding, you're going to stumble. Because he allowed himself to be caught up with the common denominator of the culture. And they misled him, his wives. And he did what God told him not to do. He did what his father told him not to do. He amassed wealth. He amassed women. You know, all of that. See, you could amass all that stuff. And it's nice to have good things. It's nice to have a nice house. It's nice to have a nice car. It's nice to be able to take a vacation when you want. But that without God is a waste of time. A little guy could do much. You don't believe me. You need to read the story about the f five loaves and the fishes. So he says here in that second verse, he says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, what does that mean, to worship in spirit and in truth? Anybody know what that means? Just raise your hand. I'm not going to call on you. I just want to see. You see, to worship God in spirit and in truth you must know him. We used to sing a song back in the day, do you know the Lord and the pardon of your sin? Have he changed you, forgiven you, made you whole again? Do you have the peace of God living in the comfort of knowing he'll always step right in? See, God will let you wander off, but he don't want you to keep wandering. You know what sheep have to do? You know what their tendency is? 
the wonder. That's why some folks ain't here today. Some are on vacation, but other folks are just wondering, going here and going there, doing this, doing that. See, when you truly have a relationship with God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit in the focal point or the center of your relationship, you know, he's not an it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a something told me. No, the Holy Spirit told you. The Holy Spirit is always omnipresent because he lives in you. Read Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. If you don't understand that, you need to dig deep in those two verses. Because if you don't understand that, you can't worship God. There's no way you can worship God. Because you're bought with a price and you've been sealed. The devil can't unseal you. Your mama can't unseal you if she get upset with you. Your father or your brother, your uncle, your neighbor, your boss, the this, the that. The world cannot unseal you. You are sealed with a promise. And what is the promise that God sealed you with? What did Jesus prop- promise the uh, disciples? He said, tarry in the city till after. Till after what? The Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many of you have had the Holy Spirit come upon you? Now, I'm not talking about getting chills in your spine. I'm talking about speaking in tongues. And you didn't plan to speak in tongues. Can I get a witness? The first time that happened to me, it blew my mind. I said, where'd that come from? It's the Lord that gives you power to speak. You don't need to practice. You just need to practice being in relationship with the Lord, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. That word worship is the focal point of this message. The true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23. Worship literally creates a channel or conduit through which the Holy Spirit, the God, the Father, enters the atmosphere. To be true worshipers, it must come from where? All you know the answer it must come from your heart. And I'm not talking about the one that's beaten. I'm talking about the heart of who you are. You cannot worship God if you're not in him. What did Jesus say? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Why did he promise that? Because he know God is true and God is faithful. He knew his father is true. He knew his father is faithful. He knew the Holy Spirit is true. He knew the Holy Spirit is faithful. That's why he told the disciples, I will send a comforter. And on the day of Pentecost, you know, Pentecost happened on Mount Sinai too in the Old Testament. Yes, it did. And it happened in the New Testament. The waters were divided not just in the Old Testament, it was also divided again. Twice. God parted the water for the children of Israel. And you know one of the things he did? He, who did he put before him to have them usher in when they were going to battle? Come on. I know, I know Cedric knows the answer to this. I'm not asking him. But some of you should know the answer to this. It was the worshipers, the singers that went before the military. And they sang the song. And the minute the priest put their feet on the water, a divided, and they were walking on solid ground. Now, that ground should have been muggy and muddy, right? But it wasn't. They walked right through and crossed through the other side at the Red Sea. They walked right through and crossed over to the promised land. You see, God will do what he said he would do. God is faithful. What was that song we just sang before I sang those other two worship songs? Come on now. Richard Smallwood song. What was the name of that? How does it start off? Anybody remember? 
That's the tagline. Mmm. Mmm. So our next verse says this. Ephesians 5, 19 and 20. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart. How many know the difference between a psalm and a hymn? Raise your hand. What's a, what's a psalm? I'm glad you asked, but I'm not going to tell you just yet. I want you to hunger for it a little bit. Because the Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And you know, we have a tendency to just want to give everybody everything too quick. You ever notice that? We do that to our children. Here, take this. Be quiet. <laughs> Get out of my way. Get down. Stop. Leave me alone. Here, take this. Take that. Sit at the store. Give them even a phone. But you know, God don't get frustrated. You ever notice that? He might become wrath, but he is patient. Look how long it took him to do what he did to the children of Israel. It was a long time. And then he allowed the sheep to scatter. When there's no shepherd, the sheep will scatter. And sometimes that person may be present physically, but they're not present spiritually. How many of you have been in a relationship but you wasn't present <laughs> relationally? You were somewhere else in your mind. You were thinking about this. You were thinking about that. You were planning for this. You were planning for that. You got to be on the same page. You want a relationship to work. So if you want a relationship with God, it takes time. And then you can't do that by getting on the internet. You can't get that by looking at television. You can't do that by watching all of those now, some of those programs are good. I give, you, I give you that. But that's not the source. If you want to get it, you have to do what? Go to the source. If you, let me share this with you. I'm going to go over here. I want to share something. I took music lessons and I learned this a long time ago. Michael McDonald, who sang with, what's her name? Catherine Coleman. Catherine Coleman. And one day I'm walking, going somewhere else, and I see all these people in all white over there at the Shrine Auditorium. And she was having a healing service for the sick and the bereaved. And I said, who is Catherine Coleman? I didn't even know who she was. I was 19 years old. I didn't know who she was. I had met Billy Graham years earlier in Fresno. I knew who he was. And that's the first time I knew who he was when I met him. And you know what's so interesting? When they begin to sing those songs, her number one song is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first time I felt worship. I, I forget how many members was in that choir, but it was a mass large choir. And it just struck a chord in my spirit and my tears began to fall. I said, what's going on, Lord? I'm not supposed to be acting like this. Because I never was taught. I went to seminary school after that after running from the Lord for a few more years. <laughs> I began to read my Bible ferociously. And you know what's interesting? When I saw that worship, and then when I saw some other worship at some other places, I was at a holiness church and they were flailing their arms and doing that stuff and jumping up and down. I said, what is this? God is an umbrella, a rainbow of different people, different cultures, different expression, and it's all the same thing. They're what? Worshiping the Lord 
in their inference, in their experience. And I went somewhere else and they were just doing their hands like this and I said, okay, praise the Lord. Different expression. Is it wrong? No. Now there are certain songs you love, like those songs I love. I love those songs. I like that one by Hezekiah Walker too, that other one he sings is just dynamite. It just sits my soul on fire. And you know what's interesting? There are other songs that are just as valid. You see, you can be quiet and be worshiping the Lord. Don't kid yourself, just because you loud don't mean you worshiping. Now you can be loud and worshiping and you can be quiet and worshiping and you can be loud and not worship and you can be quiet and still not worship. It's all about the, if your heart's not right, it's not gonna be right. What shall we do to these things? Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of a good report. The Bible tells us do everything decently in order. That means in an orderly fashion. That doesn't mean we have to do everything without allowing the Holy Spirit to have an effect. We can't be so caught up with time that we don't give the Holy Spirit a chance to move. If you're so caught up with time that the Holy Spirit gonna move, you're never gonna experience that in the body of Christ. Now you can experience yourself, and I experienced it. Let me share this with you. The first time I experienced the Holy Spirit, I wasn't singing. I was trying to get some understanding. I'm reading my Bible, and I'm cross-references, and, and I was there for five hours. I was engaged at the time. And the un un interesting thing is, when she came back, she says, I was knocking on the door, you didn't even hear me. But it felt like when she said that, I was like way up here in the rafters, looking down. The Lord had lifted me up out of my physicalness and taken me to another level. And I said, wow, Lord, this is awesome. Now what? Finally, when I came down, after about an hour and a half later, the Lord began to tell me some things. You see, you don't need music to worship, but it helps, okay? One of the first things you need to worship is prayer. And the second thing you need is the word because it sets the tone. We just read the word, didn't we? I'm going back over here. I'll be back. I want to share that with you because I want you to have an understanding of what God does and how God does his work. See, he doesn't depend on me to discern what he's going to do. I'm not dependent on him to determine what I'm going to do. So let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. This kind of worship causes God's divine presence to manifest and everything is then subject to being changed supernaturally. Everything will change when God enters. And I believe it's in Chronicles and it talks about, and the Lord was in the house and it was so full that the cloud, and it was so full of his presence that the priests could not speak. That's awesomeness. You ever heard this? You ever read this? Be still and know that I am God. Stillness sometimes will bring you to a presence of worship. That doesn't mean having an idle mind. That means your mind stayed on him. Not on what your TV show is, not on what you want to do after church. If you hear one of well, why don't he stop talking? I, I'm hungry. I, I got this to do. Well, you're never going to experience true intimacy with God with that attitude. I learned that a long time ago because I was a tirelessly impatient child. Got in so much trouble, it was ridiculous. But God had mercy on me. Now, if you ever get a chance, go to Bolshevik and look it up. The Bolshevik uh, Museum, look it up online, and they will show you it's in Russia, and it's such a beautiful, awesome edifice. 
And in there, there were beautiful music instruments, the Stradivarius, even had an organ, it's so beautiful, and it was upright. It didn't look like an organ, but it was an organ. But when the fall of Russia went through, all of those things ended up, except for this particular piece, was put into a museum. Now guess what you are? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know that, don't you? And you are not your own. And God wants you to know him. It says, and the spirit of the Lord, in Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me with the Holy Spirit and with power to give eyesight to blind, to set the captives free, to set at liberty them that are, are bruised. God is awesome. When Jesus got up out of the water, when John the Baptist baptized him, the Holy Spirit sat upon and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Would you love to hear that? This is my child in who I am well pleased. Is God pleased with you this morning? Or are you just pleased with yourself? I'm not pleased with myself. I'm still not satisfied because I know I got a lot more to learn and a lot more to do. I may know a few things more than you. I'll never forget my mother and how she worshiped the Lord and she didn't know God the way I know God but she knew God and what does God say suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God he's not talking about you be a child he's talking about have that attitude see sometimes we have an attitude well I'm not coming to church Rev. Martin speak preaching today well I'm not coming today deacon so and so is speaking or I'm not coming to, you know so and so you can't have that attitude because you never know what God is going to do for you through somebody you least expect the very answer to something you've been asking the Lord for may be when you don't come to church so if you're not present God can't give you that gift God wants to give you a gift he gives you the gift of what? Of the Holy Spirit. But he also gives you the gift of grace. And he also gives you the gift of the word of knowledge. Or he may give you gift of faith. You see, we all have faith, but you may not have the gift of faith, which is a distinct difference. Now, all of us can sing, but all of us are not singers. We can't sing like Earl. See? But you don't have to sing like Earl. You need to sing like you. God wants to hear your voice, your little melody that kind of blend with what he hears. Do you know God could hear all the songs in the world simultaneously and he don't get confused? That should tell you something of how God is, how awesome he is. When the body of Christ worship, it attracts the very presence of God. When his presence comes, his glory, which is heavy with everything good, meeting the needs of everyone in the place. When you look at Psalms 22, 3, it says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabit the praises of Israel. This tells us that God loves our worship so much that he sat enthroned on the praises of his people. God sits enthroned of the praise. You see, you don't just have to praise God and worship God when you come to church. You can do that right home. You can do that while you're driving down the street. God is not limited. But we limited our relationship with him when we deny him the freedom and the opportunity to move on our behalf. Come let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Singing to the Lord in tongues brings the presence of God. Singing unto the Lord in psalms brings the presence of God. Singing to the Lord 
and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart unto the Lord. As I said earlier, worship comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the head. Now, if you're constantly trying to remember the lyrics, it's going to be hard for you to truly worship. Now, a spiritual song comes directly from the heart, and it just gusses out. I'll never forget I, 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 I sang this song uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. Everybody knows this song, but the lyrics that came to me was different. One will make a dream come true. Two, God truly loves you. Three, it should be plain to see that he's the only one for me. And four, repeat steps. One, two, three, know that God truly to love me. If ever I should think my work is done, then I start again at one. You see, God knows how to touch you. He will use what he has to use. He got me trying to learn music. I was running from him. He wanted me to go into ministry a long time ago, and I've been running. So I wanted to learn music, and I went to this music. And guess what? The music teacher was an ordained minister. <laughs> God had me set up. I was set up. He knew my desire for music, and he used that to get me. And from then on, I came into the ministry. It took a few moments, but he taught me, my mentor taught me a whole lot of things. And there's a song at the end of this ministry, uh, 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 the word that I'm going to sing with you, Give Thanks, that I wrote with him and arranged with him. And we're going to be closing it not too long from now. But I wanted to share a couple of other things with you about psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart unto the Lord. I want you to understand that God is not limited to your understanding. He's not limited to my understanding. He's not limited to anybody else's understanding. God truly wants you to know him. Ephesians 5, 4 says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now this is a song that was sung in Ephesus. It's a song that was sung in Ephesus, and it is called the Hermetic Literature. Hermetic Literature is those songs like in Colossians that I read from you this morning, and Ephesus, even in Thessalonians. These songs were sung, and Paul said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. And though they were singing this song, he did it in his message to them. You know, you will remember the songs more than you will remember the message, the words, the general words when you listen to it. If you put melody to the words of the scripture, you will learn them faster. And I learned this song from the name Matthews, and she taught me this song, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God, and knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. Powerful, isn't it? Simple little song. I will sing praises, I will sing praises, I will sing praises to thy name, because you've done so much for me. I'll praise your name eternally. I'll sing, I'll sing, I'll sing. Praise your name. 
Don't ever forget to give praises and thanks unto God. You want to see God move in your life? Make sure you acknowledge him ad infinitum. Don't make a decision without checking with him first. Oh, don't make a decision without checking with the Lord first, because if you do, that's a big mistake. It is well with my soul is another song. Lord Jesus, make me a blessing to someone. That's another song you've heard me sing here. My mentor and I wrote and arranged this song many years ago. He's gone to be with the Lord. But it's a powerful song. Lord Jesus, make me more loving to someone. Lord Jesus, make me more giving to someone. Make me a blessing today. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Simple words. It doesn't have to be difficult. Sing from your heart. I wrote a song for my son when he was born. And I've sung it here many years ago. You know what his name means, Josiah? I got it out the Bible. Jehovah strengthen, strength of the Lord, Jehovah. That is a witness that God had blessed me in such a special way, and I wanted to give glory to God, so I did by doing that song. So when you look at Ephesians, when you look at Colossians, Ephesians 4.14, and you look at Colossians and other scriptures, let's say Philippians, just before we close, Philippians, he says, Philippians 2, 9 and 10, when you say these things, our Lord, it's an exhortation to your own soul, and it brings the power of God. Let us all stand. We're going to sing, Just Think of His Goodness to You. Just think of His goodness to you. Just think of His goodness to you. Just think how he brought you by grace thus far. Just think of his goodness to you. My father who lives up in heaven looks down on his children below. He pours out his blessings of mercy because he loves us so. Sing the chorus with me. Just think of his goodness. Just yes to you, to you. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think how he brought you by grace thus far. Just think of his goodness to you. I love my Father in heaven. Because he first loved me. Yes, he does. He purchased my soul salvation. Yes, died on Calvary. Sing it with me. Just think of his goodness. Just think. Sing it again. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think how he brought you by grace thus far. Just think of his goodness to you. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace. We are all right at this time.
doors of the church are still open. If God has moved in your heart and you want to give your heart to Jesus, now's the time. Now's the time. God bless you. So we want to thank God for our man and the speaker of the hour. So we want to thank God for that. Thank you, Reverend Martin, for always enlightening us. And let's go into our benediction. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for worshiping. We thank you for worship. We thank you for the word of how to enter into worship with you. So now, Father, we ask that you continue to guide us and direct us. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you for being here at Trinity, worshiping with us today. Amen. Come shake the preacher's hand. Yes, it's me, you know.